if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration and juice. It is January the 7th, 2023, and today the topic is the mental battle. Happy Saturday, everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope that you all had a great day yesterday. Mine was just fine. Um, before I get going too, too deep, um, I would definitely want to say thank you to anybody that tuned in to last night's episode of the GSL talk show. Um, but if you missed it, friend, I implore you to go and check it out because especially, especially if you are a parent, um, Dr. Lisa Smith, she dropped so many gems and information to hopefully help, um, this next generation be a little bit more safe when it comes to sexual abuse and everything like that. Um, So by all means, check out that episode, y'all. It's called A Real Conversation Around Sexual Abuse with Dr. Uh, Lisa Smith. Um, It should be our feature video on the website now, godsexandlove.com. And so very, very powerful message. I feel like all parents need to hear it um, and everything like that. So, um, yeah. (laughs) Wanted to start off with that. Uh, as for yesterday, for me, not too, too, too much to report. I mean, long story short, me and my little guy, I was out there hustling in the streets yesterday. Y'all know I do Uber Eats every now and then. And so I went out there and did that. Um, took my little guy with me and everything like that. It was nice, you know, bonding as well as working and stuff like that. Um, I guess a few key moments is that, you know, one of my people... Or the person that I was delivering to saw NJ and was like, just wanted to give him some money and all that. <laughs> and so the rest of the time, ever since he had like $2 in his pocket, he's like, I want to get ice cream for you and for Papa and for me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, kid, you know, you got $2. I mean, I don't know how far it's going to go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a really cute moment yesterday. And so... Yeah, yeah. And I mean, hey, abundance 2023, y'all, because I mean, I want to say it was a pretty good day, if I I must say myself. Um, You know, there were tips, there were, um, you know, the incentives, because sometimes Uber does this thing where they, um, you know, if you do a certain amount of trips, they'll give you extra money or whatever the case is. And so, eh, like they say, today was a good day. So yeah, Friday was a good day. In regards to all of that, and that's what it looked like for me. So, here we are, right? Uh, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, we're chit-chatting. And, uh, well, first of all, your girl woke up around 2.47. That's what time I woke up, right? And, you know, so you know what I do. I tend to look up Bible 2.47, and then I also looked into the Strong's Concordance. Now, the Bible verses that I came across, they were they were good, you know? But, ultimately, I went to the Strong's Concordance, and... That is where the inspiration comes from today. Um, The two statements that I saw basically made me think about this phrase, gird up differently. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um, So I did my prayer meditation and everything like that. And so by the time I did that, that's when I was looking up Strong's. And it really, I guess, didn't resonate until I started to look up. um, I looked up the word gird. um, And... As I started to read some different verses, I noticed, like, I guess when I hear gird, right, when I first heard the word this morning or when I first came across it, I was just thinking about, you know, gird up your loins, you know, and things like that. But I noticed as I was looking up the verses this morning, they were all kind of focused on spiritual, mental. And I was like, that's interesting. And then that reminded me that the second um, thing when I looked up the show school court and said differently so the first one was like gird up and then the second one was meaning differently and I was like oh and I think that's what pretty much resonated with me this morning to go deeper and I just kind of kept looking up different phrases that ultimately um 
my mind, I guess, was centered more so around like this mental battle um, that we may or may not at, see that we are in. I mean, on one hand, I see it all around us. I see examples of people being in mental battles all the time. Um, I know I came across a a post. Our friends over there at Lace Ministries posted that someone that they had been helping or whatever, um, I believe January 1st, um, lost her life in a domestic situation. Um, and not to say that, you know, no blame to the victim or anything like that. I mean, obviously people go through different things, but you, I can't help but wonder, right? Like if her mind was renewed, um, in regards to Christ or any of these things, like how differently would her life have been? Um, you know, would she have stayed in a domestic abusive situation? You know, um, and, you know, unfortunately, I keep hearing about so many people passing, you know, young people, seemingly healthy people, all these different things. And, um, you know, obviously, I got my um, ideas and belief behind what I'm thinking is going on based on what I'm receiving over since 2020. I think everybody should know people are really getting censored when they say it. So um, anyway, um, and unfortunately, you know, I, I wonder, like, where would these people would these people have passed if their minds were you know, were renewed, you know, if, if they, they really truly understood that, okay, I don't have to comply with this, you know, this, that, and the other, um, it was crazy, I know, I, while I was out yesterday, I was listening to GSL, you know, I listen to the juice every now and then, you know, while I'm riding it and stuff, and so, um, I came across the episode that was called, uh, not Testify, I did listen to Testify, but there was another episode that I came across, and it was talking, and I ended up talking about like um, civil disobedience. That's what it was, civil disobedience. And for for because for whatever reason, basically, um, you know, I, I talked to this individual that really took a problem with what the Bible had to say about like um, following the government. But I'm like, how can we take a problem with that when the Bible is very clear that if the government goes against biblical principles, then you don't have to comply with that. Um, you know, I feel like it's very clear and it's also stated in so many different biblical figures, you know, lives and what they went through. Like, you know, like name a few, David, I mean, excuse, well, maybe David, I can't remember. Daniel was what the one I meant to say. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Esther, all these people did not comply with what the quote unquote government um, was mandating on them or whatever the case is. So uh, with that being said, I mean, you know, um. Gird up differently, right? I think there's really something to this this whole concept, again, of the mental battle. I feel like there's an ongoing battle for our minds and the way we think. Um, I know even I was talking to my husband the other night, and, um, you know, I just was sharing with him. I, we kind of ended up talking about, you know, I know he was like, oh, well, you know, maybe when you talk to future atheists or whatever the case is, like, you know, cause, because of what we I had went through with the previous person, um, I guess he was like, you know, maybe you could listen to some this or that. And it's like, here's my thing. I don't have no problem talking to anybody. And and I'm okay with agreeing to disagree. But on the flip side, you'll notice that people that may not be believers or whatever, they get mad about the Bible. They are angry. They are upset. They are mad about what the Bible has to say. My thing is, if you don't feel like it's true, then why are you so mad? Like, why you care? You know, like, it, like I don't have to, like, again, when I did have the conversation with the atheist gentleman or whatever the case was, I never told him when he was wrong about his thoughts. I never told him none of that. Like, I, you know, I just shared my opinion. He was sharing his opinion. I thought we had a good conversation. But, um, obviously it got to the point where it just went beyond where he wanted to pretty much attack me and my belief and, and everything like that. And I'm like, why did he even get there? Like, it didn't even have to go there. Um, I was okay to, you know, have different opinions and things like that. So, there is a battle, right, uh, spiritually, Definitely, but um, I would say for our minds, and you know, uh, so that's what the topic's about today. That's what I ended up going deeper about. So let's see what the Bible has to say. All right, so Second Corinthians ten three through five it says, "For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For weapons, excuse me, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh." but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God 
and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So, um, honestly, I was thinking about just leaving the verses at that and not even adding any other verses. I ended up writing down a couple more that I wanted to share with you all. But really, that sums it all up. Like, in my head, in my mind, the way I'm, when I read it, I, I feel like it just sums the, the whole conversation up. At the end of the day, again, the, the battle isn't necessarily physical, you know. Um, and I think we are so focused on physical and we're focused on, like, taking issues with, this group versus another group and all that type of stuff. When at the end of the day, the, the battle is really spiritual. The battle is really mental in a lot of ways too. And why is that? Why is there this battle for our minds? Why is there this strong, um, like, pull to to get us to not believe anything that the Bible has to say and things like that? Like, again, it's one thing to have a difference of opinion and all that type of stuff and have conversations. That's fine. Like, but there's like a real, if you really, really pay attention, you'll notice that there's like a real strong, like, nah, like, don't believe what that has to say. That like, that's the, and so much so where it's like, you get, you, they'll attack you, your family, your mind, all this type of stuff. And it's like, yo, like, I mean, <laughs> Anyway, it's just very interesting, right? And so, I guess the question is, why is that, right? Um, well, if you look at this verse here, it's telling us that uh, we are not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy, to destroy strongholds. And there you go. I mean, that's one reason, again, if we don't... For example, if we don't align with what the Bible tells us, right, that who it tells us that we are, um, what it tells us that we have power over, that we have power over our minds and that we have self-control, all these different things. If we truly don't align ourselves with those, that mentality, then, you know, how can we break strongholds? How can we destroy uh, the arguments and love the opinions raised against the, raised against the knowledge of God and things like that? Um, you know, how can we take our thoughts captive to obey Christ? Um, so there is a, again, a strong battle for our mind to not even, you know, one, not believe God, not believe what, who God says that we are. And, and it just goes on from there. And so, um, the mental battle, y'all, <laughs> the mental battle, um, like I said, I was going to just leave it at that and just be like, hey, here's some more verses to marinate on. But basically, I did feel led to write down a few more verses. So here are, or here they are. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, it says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the looks like I wrote unique, but that doesn't sound right. Um, who is the something of God? Oh, image, excuse me. Who is the image of God? <laughs> um, so, I mean, again, this verse, I guess, gives us a little bit more understanding of, like, why unbelievers, I guess, think the way they do or, like, what's going on with them. Um, and see, that's the thing. Like, when you really just really break it all the way down and be like, you know, everything just pretty much boils down to this this concept of good versus evil, um, then, then you'll see, I guess you start to see clearer, like what people are operating in, um, based on again, the fruit and everything like that. So that's what's going on. You know, they're basically the minds are blind and everything like that. And sometimes I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like sometimes even those that claim to be believers, um, eyes and ears and stuff seem to be blinded and blocked in this season. And I'm just like, wow, you know, again, because a lot of the things I'm seeing and hearing and whatnot, I'm like, I'm just amazed that it seems like people aren't seeing and hearing it. And I'm like, now I get the concept, I guess, of being a watchman and stuff. And I'm like, well, if I'm out here, you know, trying to call out to the people and let everybody know that, hey, hey, just, you know, trying to warn people about whatever I'm seeing and hearing. Um, you know, but at the same time, too, it's like only so much someone could do, you know, Um I understand that there's like people have their own free will. They make their own choices. And so I can't force nobody to do anything, even though I could be over here warning and stuff all day. Um, you know, um, at the end of the day, people make their own choices and decisions. And unfortunately, I feel like we're seeing a lot of results of 
those things. Um, and it's sad in a lot of ways because I'm like, man, you know, <sighs> honestly, lately, I've just really been feeling like there's just unnecessary loss of life and things like that. Like, but that's, that's a whole nother subject. Let's stay on <laughs> the mental battle, right? So then Colossians 3 and 2 was something that came across my mind as well to share. And it says, set your mind, or excuse me, set your minds on things that are above, not things that are on earth. Again, I tell y'all every day, like when I, as I do this and stuff, um, not only is because, you know, it's encouraging and inspiring to me. And then I, I hope that I'm encouraging and inspiring the next person. But, um... Again, I guess I do this because I feel like I really truly feel like God is speaking and he's using different things to call out to us and reach to us and 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 share with us. Like even I had a dream um, that I woke up to. I don't remember too, too much, but I did look up one part of it. I know this is going to sound funny. Um, I looked up one part of it and it was the uh, <laughs> y'all going to be like, she dreams about cartoons. Uh, well, yeah, I mean. It wasn't a cartoon, but anyway, it, was, it wasn't a cartoon, it was like a live action dream, but what I'm saying is there was a character in it from a cartoon, um, and not made like a cartoon, I guess like in human form of the cartoon, but anyway, regardless of that, it was Mrs. Finster from, I know that's awesome, it was Mrs. Finster from uh, Recess was in my dream, and I just happened to look up Finster this morning, and apparently Finster means like dark and you know, sinister and all these different words like that. And I'm like, wow, that's very interesting. And if I if I go deeper and start thinking about other aspects of the dream and start to, like, you know, do my best to interpret it, whether I use, you know, the websites or any of these things, it would speak to me spiritually. Like, and I, that has happened. I mean, I feel like I've shared a lot of dreams out here for, with y'all. But dreams, visions, waking up at certain times, all this different type of stuff has been ways that the Lord has spoken to me. Again, the fact that I'm even talking about the mental battle today is literally because I woke up at 247 and I just happened to look up what the strongest concordance had to say about 247. So, I, listen, like, you know, this, this, I, I guess what I'm receiving today is that this battle is different, right? We, the mental battle, we need to gird up differently. You know, it's not about just fighting or whatever the case is it's not about just the physical fight it's the spiritual battle it's the battle for our minds it's you know again if we have our mind focused on god right like this last verse said we got if I, if we set our minds on the things that are above and not on the things that are, are on earth when we see things happening or when we're presented with options or whatever the case is then i believe that we'll be better equipped to um fight this battle and, and say, okay, no, I'm going to use my discernment here and not go that way or not do this or that. And, um, and it, and lives are at stake when it comes to that. Um, that's what I'm seeing and, and stuff. So y'all can think about that and pray about that on your own. I mean, you know, obviously y'all can go deeper as well. Plenty of verses in the go deeper section to peruse and let marinate on your heart, souls, and minds. There's one more I feel led to share and it's Isaiah 26 and three. It says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I believe that that's what the Lord wants. He wants us in constant communication with him, trusting him to lead us and guide us in all things. And um, and that's the juice, y'all. That is the juice. I mean, you know, again, I believe that this battle is important. This mental battle for our minds is, is very prevalent in there. Um, I hope that you all take heed to, to, you know, what the Lord has shared with me this morning. Cause like I said, that's the juice. That is the juice. Uh, but the Bible verse of today is first John four and nine. It says in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son to the world that we might live through him. Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, sex and love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all on Monday, if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. Hey, y'all. I'm Nyla O'Neill with Anchor Providing the Institute. We're located at 737 South Hill Street in Griffin, Georgia. Look, this program was birthed out of a will to help and push you closer to your dream, customizing each and every learning path for each and every student, giving you hands-on education um, with myself and, and other teammates. We're here to help you and drive you to be the best version of yourself. 
Look, we are a 12-week program, and it will be vigorous, but it will be worth the work. Put the work in, you will see it in the end. We are dedicated to seeing you not only finish our program, but to get certified. We are an accredited school through the National Phlebotomy Solutions, and we are so ready to meet each and every one of you. Contact us today.